Have I ever heard of the NAO? No, I can't say I have. NAO? Uh, <laughs> no, I have no idea. It actually stands for the North Atlantic Oscillation. Uh -huh. Have you ever heard of that? No. North Atlantic Association. Oscillation. Oscillation. North Atlantic, North Atlantic Oscillation. Oscillation? What's oh, oscillating? What is oscillating? Yeah, what's not many people have ever heard of the North Atlantic Oscillation, but they should because it is the primary driver of weather and climate variability over much of the Northern Hemisphere. When we talk about forecasting the weather, we're really talking about very short-term events in the atmosphere. When we talk about climate, we're talking in some sense about the average weather. The details of how the ocean and the atmosphere and the land surface interact over a longer period of time, perhaps 20 or 30 years. The North Atlantic Oscillation is defined by the difference in atmospheric pressure between low pressure over Iceland and high pressure over the Azor Islands. And when the pressure difference is greatest, the winds blowing from west to east across the Atlantic tend to be stronger. And this changes the distribution of temperature and precipitation from the United States through Europe and Asia. If we have very well understood the basic pattern of the North Atlantic Oscillation, we have a pretty good idea about the mechanism. What we don't know yet is how to predict the North Atlantic Oscillation. The only way that we can begin to answer questions about the future behavior of the climate system is by building models of the climate system. A climate model is essentially a very large set of complex mathematical equations that describe the evolution of the atmosphere of the ocean of the land surface. By solving this very complex set of equations, the climate model can produce its own climate that mimics how the real world operates. So what we see here is a snapshot of the climate condition in the North Atlantic sector. A lot of lines together mean there's very strong winds following parallel to these lines from west to east. What we study when we look at the North Atlantic oscillation is how this picture changes over time. You see the temperatures in colors here, and you see the cold air from the Arctic goes towards Labrador, giving you a very cold condition in northern Canada and Greenland. That would be the positive phase of the North Atlantic Oscillation. And at other times, you see the cold air showing up over Europe. That's the negative phase of the North Atlantic Oscillation. But you've definitely noticed that it never happens at the same time. Either Europe is warm and it's very cold over Labrador, or the other way around. And this seesaw in temperatures is associated with the North Atlantic Oscillation. It's very important that we evaluate these models relative to reality. So we need observations of the real world. Request and clearance to transit the Narrows, over. Oleander, if I'm going to you have to send to the Narrows, you are here. The Oleander goes out into the North Atlantic Ocean, and it measures the temperature, the salinity, the phytoplankton distribution. And this gives us a body of observations from which we can actually evaluate our climate models. This is called a deep blue. It's a buoy that'll measure the water temperature down to a depth of 750 meters. It'll also continue the climatological data that the oleander has been doing for many years in logging the ocean's temperature. From instruments, we have about 100 years of data. What we would really like to have is a record which is 1,000 year long. Now, obviously, we cannot go back and take barometric measurements a thousand years ago, so we have to use different tools. The treatment research is so exciting because it's sort of a new discovery around every corner. Finding trees that are 300 or even 400 years of age is a remarkably useful discovery because we can now use the ringwidth variations to tell us about periods of past drought and wetness and such like that, kind of like what we're seeing right here with the rain. We extract a five millimeter diameter core of wood from the tree. It's analogous to almost like a hypodermic needle for a human.
This is what we would take home to the lab for analysis. I can very clearly see the annual banding that represents each year of growth of this tree's life. A narrow ring would mean drier than normal, and a wide ring would mean wetter than normal. And all this information can be utilized to reconstruct past climate of various kinds. One of the factors that has really caused there to be a resurgence of interest in the North Atlantic Oscillation is how will global warming interact with these dominant patterns of climate variability, such as the North Atlantic Oscillation. So one of the key things that we need to understand is how the North Atlantic Oscillation has varied through time. And that's what you see here in this pressure difference index, which shows how the oscillation has varied in time from about 1864 up until uh, the most recent years. You can see that there are very large fluctuations from one year to the next and it almost has a random appearance. But one of the ways in which that has changed in recent decades is you can see a strong upward trend in the index from very low index values during the 1950s and the 1960s to now persistently highly positive values of the index in recent decades. That tells us that there's something else that might be nudging the atmosphere into this positive state of the North Atlantic Oscillation. And I think that fairly clear evidence is emerging that the buildup of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere is warming up the tropical oceans. And through our experiments with climate models, we are now able to show that warmer tropical oceans have an impact on the North Atlantic Oscillation. Everybody asks me, Martin, what is the climate going to be in the next century? What is the weather going to be next week? What is the NAO going to do next year? Now this is a very difficult question, and what scientists are trying to do is they're trying to understand how climate works today, how it has worked in the past, and then by our understanding of the climate system, extrapolate towards the future.